they lead overall six to four. Doug Geisler will be kicking off for Rutgers. Mark Camphouse on the sidelines. A lot of pressure on him today, Bob. Yes, sir. He's a fifth-year senior out of Moeller High School in Cincinnati. A great leader. They think a lot of him. They voted him one of the co-captains of this team. And uh, he needs to have a good day. He needs to have a good day for himself because he's coming off an injury from last season. It kept him out of several games. But more importantly, he needs to get into the rhythm of the game and get the offense going. And Jack Bicknell's offense is a variety of motion and movement, shifting, all sorts of things. Okay, Doug Giesler, senior out of Hillsborough, New Jersey, about to boot it up. And there it is. Line drive kick bouncing at the 20. It's caught at about the 15-yard line and hit hard at the 28. That is Adam Womack, who brought that ball back. Short man on the receive team. So Boston College will take over. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. 16-yard return. Mark Camphouse, and the big stat there from last week, four interceptions. He was aiming the ball, said he was tentative, throwing off the back foot, said he tried to correct that. This week in practice, we'll see how he does. Of course, the rain, a major factor. Toner and Sanders, they give to Mike Sanders, who bowls his way across the 30 to the 32-yard line. The senior out of Baltimore, brought down by Chuck Paw, number 58 for Rutgers. Right away, going with the run, and you're looking at the offensive lineup right there. Camp House at quarterback, Ed Toner the fullback, and of course Sanders the tailback. The key receivers, Chamura the tight end, Cherry the split receiver. Now that offensive line had some troubles at the tackle spot. Jovanovich and Kennedy replacing a couple of big monsters for Boston College who went on to the pros last year. Second and seven for BC and Camphouse on the draw. And this is Sanders who gets up across the 40. First down yardage for the Eagles. Off the drop back action that time. They slip the ball to the tailback Sanders. And he gets good yardage running off the right side behind Mark Kennedy, the right tackle. And Ankin, the right guard. And the Rutgers defensive line. This is where they need to have some pressure. Looking for it today from Scott Miller. He's the guy who can do it for Rutgers, trying to put some pressure on the opposing quarterback. Bob Spidel, Pat Yudovich, the two inside backers ranking one and two in tackles. Darren Sellers, the key man in the defensive secondary. This time, give to the first man through, and that is big, Ed Toner, six feet, 225, and he pounds across up to very close to the midfield strike. They like to use Toner in the short yardage situations down on the goal line. He's primarily a blocker. They run him inside a little bit that time. A little counter play to the fullback. They slipped it to him. He got very good yardage. And this is the weakness thus far for Rutgers, stopping the running game. And BC's trying to exploit it right away. Second and about one after the breakthrough from Toner. Sanders bouncing off the plug and he is through the 30, 25 and watch him go down to about the 17 yard line before he's finally stopped out there by Vaughn McCoy and Sanders, a 34 yard run, looked like he was plugged up at the line of scrimmage but he bounced off Bob and kept the legs pumping. He's an excellent runner out of Baltimore, the senior last year, he was their top rusher with 425 total yards, here watch him, he goes up off the left tackle following his fullback 35 toner but no poor tackling on the part of Rutgers, he breaks it off to the outside, big yardage in BC, threatening early, and that's important with this weather that they get in for an early score. Could you be know, a real psychological factor. You know, Sanders awakened last year against Rutgers, rushed for 81 yards, had only 21 yards in five games prior to that fine effort, and breaks through again. He may score, and he does. Touchdown, Boston College, and Mike Sanders, a 16-yard run again, breaking tackles en route to the end zone. Excellent blocking on the left side by Jovanovic, the left tackle, Scavone, and the tight end, Shamora, and he just breaks through tackles. You described it perfectly. Little shoddy tackling there on the part of Rutgers. This was part of their problem the first two games. Dick Anderson was concerned about the fact that they hadn't tackled well, they hadn't come off blocks well, shed those blockers and get in the face of the runner. That time, great job offensively by BC, and they're in early. So Mike Sanders with the touchdown here. 
in the opening minutes of the first quarter, BC on the board. Ray Hilbert is your holder, and Brian Lowe on the kick. He hasn't missed since October of 86. The place down, extra point is good. So the Eagles are up 7-0, thanks to some magnificent running from Mike Sanders, who's fired up, as you can see. He is. Take you a look at him. There you can see him, number 34. He just takes the toss, breaks off the left side, following the block of the fullback, as well as the big tight end, Shamora. He gets on the corner. The safety comes over, misses the tackle there. That was McCoy, and he's in the end zone for the score. So Boston College off to a fast start, 12.37 to go in the first. They're up 7-0 in the rain at the Meadowlands. Humongous Captain Delectric. Hello, this is Bob Davis. Davis. Ah, yes, 24327A. What's your problem? Our gas heater is on. Do you smell gas, 24327A? Well, no, but free. Well, we'll be there eventually, but do call immediately if you smell gas. Futura Oil Heat, how may we help you? Tired of yes, big utility Joe. service hang-ups? I'll send your servicemen right over. Discover the warmth of oil heat. The fun is always shining. Wild Dunes, as low as seventy-one fifty per person per day. For details, call Continues to fall. Didn't bother BC much in their first series of this ball game. Seven nothing. Eagles on top of the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers about to receive, and uh, Dick Anderson on the sideline. Put up that uh, hood there, Dick. Come on, stay dry, buddy. He's pouring down, and he knows what he's in for now. He's trailing seven nothing early in the game. They went right at him with the run, the thing he was most concerned about. What about? Going out with seven nothing lead in the first series like that, just bang bang. How does that hurt you? Oh, it's very discouraging because now the pressure goes right on your offense to get back in the game. But the weather conditions dictate a lot. When you get a lead like that, specifically a touchdown, that's a big jump. And, and of course, it really gives tremendous confidence to Boston College, who couldn't move the ball that well last week against uh, Pitt. They come in, they score early here. Uh, you know this defense for them is going to be fired up. Yeah, we talked to some of the Boston College players yesterday, Mark Camphaus for one, who said, hey, even though we lost last week, we still have a good attitude. We had to go through the summer with that 3-8 and eight season hanging over our heads, and we had a good series of practices all summer long, and we felt good about ourselves, and know we have the talent, and we're not down because of the loss. And today, I guess their confidence is sky high with that first series touchdown, Mike Sanders being the key. That's James Can at his own 15. Nice opening. He just about bust that one loose up to about the 34-yard line. Let's take one more look at that touchdown from Sanders. By the way, Sanders, 62 yards rushing on that drive. Five running plays in this drive with Sanders carrying four times. Here he is. He's going to break it up inside following number 61, Shane Lee, the center. He breaks it outside, just busts the tackle of the safety man. You can't tackle that way. He throws himself at him. He's into the end zone. He's too good a back to try and bring him down that way. Big play for Sanders. Big start for BC. Only took him two minutes and 23 seconds to get on the board. Scott Ernie, the key man, as we've said, in that Rutgers offensive attack. And now he gives it off to Mike Body. Near side. Puts the head down. Gets a couple. And he is driven out of bounds there by Perryman. Mike Body, who last year rushed for 148 yards in the same game against Boston College. There's a look at the backs and the receivers. Tyrone McQueen. The most dangerous of the wide outs on the offensive line. Bill Milano has been playing well at left tackle. Jeff Erickson, a veteran. Just under 12 minutes to go. 
second and eight for Rutgers. Quick flick. And that's Gary Melton good for first down yardage as Ernie completes his first pass of the day. Kevin Pearson, the man to bring Melton down. Defensively for Boston College, Chris Gilday, a tough man in the middle there, and their big rusher, the man they call the Maniac, Ivan Caesar, number 88, will keep our eyes on him all day. Linebackers, defensive backs, Jack McNeil calls Matt Kelly as good a linebacker as he's had, Lobby and Duran, the key men in the secondary. Here's Jimmy Can, who jumps across very close to midfield where Matt Kelly and Ron Perryman combined. Kelly, top ca uh, tackler in last week's ball game, had 13 total tackles and a fumble recovery. Okay, Rutgers going with the back. Body at the fullback position, Can at the tailback. Both of them can be flanked. Body usually is the single back in the offense, but Can also has ability coming out of the backfield to catch the ball. So they've got a, a passing game, the short, controlled passing game with Body, the principal runner from the deep back position. Second and six. Can second man through, he's hit at the line of scrimmage, and again, I believe that was Kelly in there to make that initial hit. Senior out of New Canaan, Connecticut. He had seven solo tackles last week alone against Pittsburgh, a two-year starter, and he follows a long line of fine linebackers over the years at BC. Hey, man, that's but a good he's the one. most recent one. There he is, he's from New Canaan, Connecticut. He had something like 18 tackles in the. Penn State game last year for Boston College. Third and four now. Mike Body, your single setback. Ernie in trouble but gets it off and it is picked off. And that is Ed Durant. Eddie Durant for Boston College and brings it back to the 37-yard line as Scott Ernie, who was bothered by the interceptions last week, throws a one, throws one early here again coming off the play fake and he took a tough hit that time he was a little bit shaken here we see it a little play action counter here fakes the body comes off that bootleg pulls up quick because he ends up in his face Caesar now as he delivers the ball watch the read by the free safety Durant perfect timing comes up on Melton and takes the ball beautiful job by the secondary and BC's got the ball back in good field position so Ed Duran picks it off. Scott Ernie threw three interceptions last week off to a bad start here. We now pause for a word from your local stations. Back in a minute. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you Gillette Atra Plus System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream, together the best a man can get. This is the shop of Hamzat Pazar, a thriving establishment on the outskirts of Bangkok. Unlike other international executives, he has no phone system, no computers, not even a fax machine. He does, however, enjoy one modern and efficient service nearly 4 billion people in 175 countries today can take for granted. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Now at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, it's Double Cashback Day. Featuring Double Cashback, direct from Chrysler on new Eagle Premieres, save 2,000 bucks. Double Cashback. On Eagle Summit, save a grand. And a thousand back, plus factory to dealer incentives on Jeep Cherokee. For big savings, see your Jeep and Eagle dealer before double cash back. Split. See your Tri-State Jeep Eagle dealer, where you can always expect the best. Eddie Duran, perhaps receiving a congratulatory call from the president. I'm not sure. Eddie yep. Duran, who I'm sure has got plenty of friends and family in the stands today, being from North Bergen, New Jersey. Watch the hit Ernie's going to take. Gilday. Gilday, 59. The nose tackle makes the hit. The ball, 15. Melton had trouble finding the football and gave Duran a chance to find it before him and make the interception. So BC, their second offensive opportunity of the afternoon in Camp House, gives it off to Timmy Frazier. 
the tailback, and he's hit by Yudovich at about the 41-yard line. Here's Fraser now. They start to alternate the tailbacks. Fraser, a junior at Lynn, Massachusetts, third leading rusher last year with a 5.3 average, really has speed. He had injuries in 88 that hobbled him at times, but the, two, the tandem of Frazier and Sanders can put a lot of pressure on you from the tailback position. Pritchett and Skerritt, the receivers up top. Camphouse will not throw, gives it to Frazier. He's got a little room across midfield. First down yardage for Boston College as they continue to pound it out on the ground. Exciting runner, look at him looking for the hole. Get the ball deep in the backfield to him. Watch this, get the ball deep, and then he's just looking for the seam, and he cuts it back, back to the right side. Great block there by 66, Hank in the right guard, who wards off the linebacker and gives Frazier a chance to get the cutback. Frazier will carry last week for only one time in the entire game. Looking impressive so far in his first opportunity. 9.04 to go. First quarter. BC on top. 7-0. Flag thrown. I believe it's too much time. That's it. You called it. Too much time that time on Camp House. Now, you got to remember, as you watch Jack Bicknell, the plays come down from above. He signals in the formations, and the quarterback calls the plays. Sometimes... Offense. No first down. Okay. I was going to say, sometimes it uh, looks rather comical on the sidelines with all his uh, machinations over there. So it's first and 15 after the penalty on BC. Lyles and Frazier, the fullback and the tailback, in the eye. Pitch to Frazier. And he is hit by Pat Udovich, who came up from his inside linebacker spot. Co-captain of this football team out of Brookhaven, PA, 6'1", 225. There's concern on the part of Rutgers also defensively because BC is bigger than they are. The right tackle, Kennedy, is 6'6", 280. Ankins, 272. Shane Lee, the veteran center, 272. They've got an advantage in size. If they can't get off those blocks, they're going to have a tough, long day because these backs can find a seam. Second and 13. Again, it's Frazier. He's got a whole right side. Slithers through across the 40 to the 38-yard line. I think it's good for first down yardage. It's going to be very, very close. Can't get any penetration. They had hoped to get in and get across that line of scrimmage, but they can't do it. They're playing off blocks on the line of scrimmage. You watch this. Watch these blockers. They can't get off. 58 can't shake it. 98. Look at the cutback ability when you can't get off the block and get up into the hole and make the hit. 12-yard gain for Frazier. Sets up a third and one. Did not quite make that first down yardage. And there you see the scene here at the Meadowlands. The rain just keeps on coming. Frazier diving. And he was caught in a hurry there by number 98, Timmy Lester. We'll see where they place the ball. Lester playing on the left side. They call that the quick end, the guy that really can put pressure on you and get back in the pass protection. And Lester knifed in that time from the left end position, made the hit. It's going to be awfully close. And I don't think they've got it. We'll see. Hmm. They've still got a foot, looks like to me. Okay, first big decision here. With the rain the way it is, leading 7-0, I would be a bit surprised they're going to go for it here. There's no big risk. Watch from the right side of the screen as you'll see number 98. Hit the play, hit him low, never give him a chance to fall the line of scrimmage. Great play by the senior Timmy Lester out of Glassboro, New Jersey. Jack Bicknell says, let's do it. Sanders in the ball game in the I formation. Who's going to get it? Neither one. Kapos to throw. He is pressured and he is sacked in the backfield. Lester gets the tackle. Rich Humphreys provides the assist, but Lester, the key man on two consecutive plays. Big call here. Instead of going for with the run, they come off a bootleg action. There's 98. He's quick enough to make a mistake and compensate for it. He went inside, got his hands on him. Two big plays by that guy. Really has turned this around right now for Rutgers early on. 
Jimmy Lester gets a high five on the sidelines. Really, that defensive front and the ability to put pressure on the quarterback. Defense overall only caused one turnover in two ball games. But we've seen a strong defensive effort that last series and Rutgers offense now a chance to maybe grab some of that momentum and move that ball down the field. Scott Ernie threw the interception last time out at the controls. The pitch. Can. And he is tackled again. Kelly makes the initial hit. Marinero follows it up. Moves it up to about the 48-yard line. One of the problems Rutgers faces and, and will face for the entire season is the lack of a real strong, physically strong blocking tight end. They don't have it in Scott Blanche or John Murphy. Because of that, it's hard for them to put together a running game, particularly off tackle. That time, they ran a little toss, and the uh, running back can't cut it back, got decent yardage. But that may be an Achilles heel for them this game and for the rest of the season. McQueen to the near side, but it's not going up. It's going to Jimmy Can, who works it forward to midfield. So Dick Anderson keeping the ball on the ground here. Chris Gilday, the man to bring Can down at the midfield line. Okay, here's a crucial for him. Third down and four, they're at midfield. They'd like to get a first down, maintain possession, build a little confidence for their offense, and keep their defense off the field. Third and four. Body in the backfield, can in motion. The give is to Body. The fullback tries to turn the corner. He does so. First down yardage, Rutgers. Really close, really close. Good defense on the corner. They came up, kicked him out of bounds just a little bit short of the mark. This is going to be a good call and another one now for Rutgers if they don't make it. Will they go for it? I thought he stuck that foot in there, but apparently it is going to be very, very close. So Dick Anderson now with a similar... Wait a minute. Oh, first down. If the, if the ball, if the nose of the ball touches that hole, if it's, if it's even with it, it's a first down. And made it by about an inch, didn't it? So I guess my first Big instincts play. were accurate. <laughs> Your instincts were excellent. Yes. So first down yardage for Rutgers. And Dick Anderson, probably relieved, didn't have to make that decision whether to go for it on fourth and inches. Scott Ernie and company, their first first down of the afternoon. Fitz Hall, up the middle, Junior out of Trenton. Five minutes and 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Washington College had gotten out front, 7-0, their first offensive series. Mike Sanders, the key man on that drive. And Rutgers starting to move the ball for the first time in the game. Body and Hall are your running back. Second and nine. But Ernie, little play action, flips it out, and he's got his man. That is Mike Body, who's an excellent receiver as well as a runner. Becky's the number two receiver on his club. Okay, they like to do it. They like to hit Body. They like to hit Jimmy Kent coming out of the backfield. Again, little counter actually comes off this fake. Follows out to the right side. BC loses him as far as the rush is concerned. Up front, he finds Body in the flat and forces number 38 Baker to come up and make the hit just a little bit short of the first down but good field position and they're well ahead of schedule third and short body and hall hall in motion ernie looks like a mix-up and he is smothered at caesar and kelly in there a mix up and that was Ernie's ball. He turned the wrong way. He wanted to reverse out and pitch the ball to Body and when he didn't do that the timing is off. See this here? He turns the wrong way. He wants to reverse and pitch it to Body. He doesn't get it there. Big play, big mistake. Mistakes have plagued Rutgers already early on this season. It's hurt him in their first two games. There's a mistake right there. So a fourth down situation as Scott Ernie confused on that last play and smothered in the backfield. So the Scarlet Knights will punt it away. That is Marcus Cherry back to receive Bill Chesna, the punter for Rutgers. Got a 35.9 average so far this year. Trying to hit it inside the 10, but it bounces into the end zone. Cherry, a wise decision to let that one bounce in. A 41-yard punt for Chesna. So mix up on that last big third down play. Boston College, the football once again. 
Mark Camphouse, the senior out of Cincinnati, calling the signals. Try to bounce back from a rough opener last weekend where he threw four interceptions. This time gives it off to Mike Sanders, the senior out of Baltimore, who was the key man in the opening offensive series. Sean Williams brings him down. They're, they're all in 80 tailback. Sanders and Toner this time back in as a tandem before it was Frazier and Lyles at the fullback position. So they've got two tailbacks. They're all in 80 them. Right now, Sanders is the big guy, the workhorse. Second and five. Toner. Basically winding it out straight ahead. You know, Camp House last week had a tough time, as we mentioned, throwing four interceptions and uh, got banged up, as we mentioned. The offensive line had a tough time protecting him. In fact, at one point, he even had to come to the sideline and change his face mask because he'd been hit so hard, the darn thing was bent. He had his troubles because... Pitt is an outstanding defensive team, a veteran defensive team, and they put a lot of pressure on, on over his offensive tackles, Jovanovic and Kennedy, both young, potentially fine players, but inexperienced. Third and one. See if he doesn't give it to the second man through, and he does. Mike Sanders locks a room, 40-45 midfield, and Sanders again, a big gainer. Vaughn McCoy finally grabs him and pulls him down. 24 yards for Mike Sanders, who's been the key man in the Eagles' attack so far today. Poor job defensively. Watch this on the right side. The defensive end, the outside linebacker comes up too wide. He gets kicked out, creates too much of a hole for his linebacker and his tackle to hold up. And number 12, McCoy the safety comes up too tight on a poor angle that he can't make the play. So the Eagles in Rutgers territory once again. Sanders the call once again. This time, uh-uh, as Bob Spidell comes up from his inside linebacker spot to make the hit. He's the top tackler on this team as he was back in 1987. Spidell missed all of last year recovering from a terrible automobile accident, but uh, he's back to his form from two years ago, and the Rutgers club is happy to see that. A minute and a half to go, first quarter. Boston College of football. The rain has subsided somewhat, but it's still coming down, a very fine mist. Boston College with their innovative offense, almost Always a new look for you as Camp House overshoots his man. That was Marcus Cherry, the preseason All-American candidate. First ball, it's come his way, but Camp House just overshoots him. That time he had good protection. He had plenty of time as Cherry came down, just turned back to the football, and he threw it poorly. Threw it behind him. Little wet track there. Cherry couldn't get his feet under him, but the pass was poorly thrown. And that's really the first time he's had to throw the ball. As you watch, as he throws the ball, watch his left foot, the water that comes out of it. <laughs> that field is wet. I think if he maintained his balance, that's a caught ball. Third and ten now. Camp House again to the air, and this time, no slippage, no overthrowing. Cherry just dropped the ball. He dropped it. It was a little bit behind him. He could catch it. I think it's wet, quite frankly, and he didn't handle it, and that was the problem. Watch this as he comes down. He's going to break out here towards the sideline. Watch the ball a little bit behind him. He's catchable. He didn't hold it. He's got those gloves on, as you can probably tell, but... Uh, Unable to hang on. Brian Lowe does both the kicking and the putting. Gets one off here. And back to receive. That is Vaughn McCoy. Dashing outside. There's a flag down. In fact, a couple of them out there. Ball pops loose. To about the 33-yard line. A 17-yard return by McCoy. As they're still wrestling over the football down there. The officials discuss the uh, penalty flag. Boston College thinks they have the football. It's going to be very interesting to see what this comes up. Two flags and the possibility of a fumble on one play. Next Saturday, right here on Great American Independent Football from Mikey Stadium. Out of the ACC, it's Wake Forest against the Army Cadets. Army's got their hands full today with Syracuse. Bob. They got their hands full, but nobody likes to play Army. They run that wishbone so well that they create problems for you. It'll be interesting to see how they hold up against Syracuse. That'll be a big game for them next week up at home as they open up at home with Wake Forest. 
I think they've come to a conclusion. Let's see if we can pick it up. The conclusion is that the ball was dead. The penalty's going to go against Rutgers. You got a five-yard delay. Fair cut. And the runner ran. <laughs> dead ball foul. They got a 15-yard personal foul. Against Boston College. They'll be dealt with in the order of a current. How do you get a clip on what? defense? I got to figure that one out against Boston College as they were trying to... That was a personal oh, foul, I, I believe. Clip. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Okay. That was one of the uh, more uh, unusual calls you're going to hear. Probably one of the more lengthy calls you'll hear, too. <laughs> so uh, the end result is... The end result is Rutgers is good. Receiving team, both football foul. That's the referee, Michael Donato, giving us that information. Thank you, Michael. The result is that Rutgers has terrible field position. Long way to go but they do still have the football. Right. And that is Ernie trotting to the sidelines. He's got a moment here. He's the key guy. Everybody knows at all time career leader in passing at Rutgers. One touchdown pass away from tying the all-time Rutgers record. And he's the guy around the, which the whole offense is based. And uh, I wonder if he's feeling too much of the burden coming off the two ties. Bob, to do too much. Well, you know, he's determined. He's been the spokesman for the team. He's uh, very positive about the future, and I think he, I know he believes it, and he may be trying too hard. But he's got his work cut out from here. Trailing seven to nothing. The ball is pushed back. Here he starts out first and ten with the ball inside his own five-yard line. It's mm. first and 20 inside the, the five-yard line. Hand off to begin this series, and the give us to Dwight Giles, the senior fullback out of Rahway, New Jersey. Got to work their way out of awful field position. Did you see the clock ticking down here to mark the end of the uh, first quarter? There's Giles, number 34. Perryman and Gilday combined to make the stop on Giles. Giles, the single setback. Quick flip out, and it's incomplete. That ball thrown for... Number 18, James Garantino. Garantano, excuse me. That time he just tried to throw a quick out, had two wide receivers to each side, spread the field, tried to get the ball outside, figuring Boston College is laying back in his own coverage. The ball was not controlled by the receiver again. It's going to be tough to throw this football, and especially in this field position. Here we go again. Third and 17 for Scott Ernie. Who might be a little gun shy with three picks last week and one already here in the first quarter. Pressure runs. Nice move by Ernie. 20, 25 yard line. Good, good field presence. 18 yard gain and Scott Ernie makes something out of nothing. First down for the Scarlet Knights. What a big play. They did not want to have to come up and punt the ball and give it back to BC in great field position. Look at it open up in the middle. His, his offensive guards and centers created that by blocking out, and they got a couple of blocks downfield for him. Away from home for Rutgers since 1976, and we see the stats here in the first quarter, Bob, and the rushing yardage, the key difference so far. No question about it. 126 to 37. BC came out running the football, controlling it on the ground, getting an early score. Talk about running the football. We saw the, well, there we see the Eagle who is uh, wringing out his feathers right now as the rain continues to fall. But talk about running Scott Ernie. What a big play a few moments to go to close out the first quarter. 18 yards on the ground. That is Dwight Giles, the fullback, as Rutgers keeping the football on the turf. We look at 34 Giles, a senior. He's had three years of experience. He's played a lot of positions for Rutgers. He's an overachiever, a guy that's worked very hard from Rahway, New Jersey. At 5'10", 195, he's got that perfect size to find that little hole inside from that fullback position. Giles, your fullback. Vince Hall, the tailback. Second and five, and Hall tries to juke his way outside, but cannot avoid Mike Marinero, who catches Hall behind the line or right at the line. Interesting confrontation. Marinaro, the sophomore out of Andover, Massachusetts, number 62, could not be blocked. And it was, he was 
Bill Milano, the senior, the veteran, number 75 for Rutgers, could not handle Milano. He got penetration, got in the backfield, and never gave Hall a chance to make the cut. Mike Marinero, if you're wondering, yes, a cousin of Ed Marinero of Cornell University fame. And stage and screen now, I guess. Third and eight. Ernie will go up top, or will he run? He will run, and he will throw. Randy Jackson intercepted at the 34-yard line by Charlie Brennan for Boston College as Ernie, once again on the run, flips the ball up. Bad play, bad play. He was rushed. He had one choice. He could have run the ball, gotten out of bounds, got some yardage. He threw it up for grabs, and it was a lofty, wobbly pass as we see here. Watch this. Little pressure. He start from his left side here. He starts to get away from it. He breaks outside. Now he's got a choice. He can tuck the ball under, get out of bounds, or throw it out of bounds. Instead, he wobbly puts it up there. That's the kind that's going to be intercepted. Here comes Brennan, the fifth back on the field. The nickel to make the catch. What he saw was that Jackson was behind that defensive uh, secondary. If he'd led him a little bit, he might have had six points, but he couldn't on that uh, slippery field and running off balance like that. Timmy Frazier for Boston College. He was hit by Darren Sellers, senior out of Arlington, New Jersey. So Ernie with his second INT of the afternoon. Coaches upstairs talking to him. He's shaking his head a little bit. Very frustrated, very frustrated. Three mistakes here. Two interceptions and one mistake on a, on a play where he turned the wrong way, never got the pitch back to his back, came up with a loss, had to punt the football. Rutgers came in on the short end of a 7-1 to one giveaway takeaway ratio, and they've lost it a couple times already today. That time, Mark Kampaus has passed, batted up in the air. Pete Kapitsis, a man to get his paw on it, I believe. Chuck Paw, picking a paw. <laughs> Maybe was the man to actually get the deflection. Here's Campos. He's looking upfield. He's looking for his outlet now. Once that's covered, he just dumps the ball out here. It is Chuck Paw. And it's an excellent effort by Paw. The three-year Letterman at 6'2", 260. He made the play. And now Campos, who hasn't been that successful, although he hasn't thrown the ball that much, throwing the football, he's got a third down and long. In fact, Campos, with 12.49 uh, to go here, has yet to complete a pass. 0 for 3. The third down play. He's looking. Fires. And it is incomplete. Marcus Cherry, the intended receiver, a flag thrown, as you can see. And Marcus Cherry clapping. Well, this is interesting. There's got a disagreement right now. No catch is the signal. But the flag was thrown. Cherry thinks, obviously, it's defensive interference. That's what it is. And that will be the call. And roughing the passer. Okay, let's talk about those mistakes, those penalties. That's been plaguing Rutgers. Dick Anderson has uh, talked about it. Coming into this game, 17 penalties for 156 yards. Already we've seen those problems in the first quarter. Here's the pass by Camphouse. There's the interference, and it is interference. The ball is dropped. We did not see uh, the personal call on the quarterback in roughing the passer. That was Darren Sellers, the defender on Cherry. Again, they come to their backs out of the backfield. That time he's looking for Sanders to hook him up inside and give him a chance to get the football in the open field. That time he was interfered with, but the drive continues. BC's got the ball in Rutgers territory. So a first down as a result of the interference call on Sellers. And B.C. with the football now on the Rutgers 38-yard line. The Eagles today out to snap a three-game losing streak to Rutgers. And as we talked about, the turnover problems continue to plague Rutgers. The penalties, the turnovers, lots of mistakes. That's something Dick Anderson wants to see stop probably two weeks ago. Frazier trying to get outside, slips and falls. Judovich and Sellers applying pressure. That time has a great job defensively by Rutgers. Their front four kept Frazier from making the cut inside. When he tried to bounce it outside, he got support right away from the cornerback and a strong safety. And with a wet field, he never had a chance to cut. That's what you need, the early downs. The early downs are key either side of the football, whether it's offense or defense. You've got to get teams into 
difficult situation, second, third, and long, then the defense starts to dictate to the offense. Sets up a second and nine for the Eagles. Camp House to give, and that is Frazier, who moves across the 30, dives forward. Timmy Lester, the man to make the stop. 11-yard gain, and uh, when they give that ball to Sanders or to Frazier at the tailback spot, it seems to me they fly every time. And that was a mistake by a young, talented football player for Rutgers, an outside linebacker named Sean Williams, number 92. He's playing the outside. That time when Frazier started to go up inside, he closed too far. When he bounced it out, he wasn't there. They love Williams as a prospect. He just needs time. He needs experience. That time his inexperience showed up. Dinez and Skerich are receivers. But Camphouse will keep it on the ground, and that is Frazier once again on the first down carry. So it'll be second and about seven, Udovich and Spidell combined. Very interesting here with 11.20 left in the second period. Boston College has had the ball 12 minutes, the Rutgers seven minutes. That means the Rutgers defense has been on the field already too long. And the Eagles with seven first downs already here. With 11.05 to go for the half. Second and eight. Frazier again, up the middle. As we're not seeing the kind of aerial show we, we might have on a perfect weather day. But of course, as you mentioned early in the broadcast, Bob, you felt like Jack Bicknell might want to keep it on the ground to, to prove that, uh, yes, that offensive line is formidable enough to get it down the ground, which they didn't get done last week. And also to work Camp House into the rhythm of the game, and he's done that. Now, they'll throw the football, but here, this is a four-down zone. They want to keep the possession and come away with some points. they got excellent field position. The rain has let up substantially. Barely falling, if at all. And that is number 49, Kevin Lyles. Looked very tentative, but James Jenkins, the converted tight end, now an outside linebacker, the man to uh, give him the pop. Very important there for, to, to keep possession. If they could get the first down, they slipped it to the fullback, Lyles. Who's only a junior. They shifted him in behind uh, Toner as the backup fullback. They wanted to keep the ball, get it right up in the center of the field, and give their excellent place kicker low a, a shot at three points there and keep command of the lead. So low is on. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. He made a 30-yard kick last week and had one blocked from 50 yards out. Again, this will be a 35-yard attempt. wide left and low who happens to hold about every kicking record in the books at Boston College unsuccessful off the turf here from 35 yards out so Boston College comes away empty they still lead though with 936 to go who could ask for anything more <laughs> and the five-speed transmission like he do does it have a five-speed transmission I'm going to check on that. Ask him if it has a bigger payload than he's to do. Ignore him. Or men or mine. Does it? Not exactly. No! Ask him why it costs hundreds more than he's to do. No! Right now, you can save big bucks on the pickup during Isuzu's ticket to the bank sale. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are, where the race is from, you're the champion, Gillette, the best. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream, together the best a man can get. Tennessee, brewed the same traditional way for over a hundred years. It's not just a beer, it's a Jenny.
Well, the Eagle, a little disappointed right now after Brian Lowe missed the 35-yard attempt. And, Bob, what about the new rule in uh, college football this year? No tees. You think that could have effect, uh, an effect on a guy like Lowe? No question. I mean, it could have an effect on anybody. It's a lot easier when you're on artificial surface, of course, because you've got an evener surface uh, to kick from. But, you know, it's a new thing. People have to get used to it. That time he pulled the ball to the left. He's an excellent place kicker. He missed it by about three feet. Rutgers back on offense. The give to Jimmy Canned, but he is met at the line by Chris Gilday. Big senior. Coming back from a shoulder injury. Very impressive. Kevin Pearson helped on the stop. Gilday is the biggest, the heaviest of the defensive linemen at about 282, and he's been around. He's, a, he's really a, a load in the middle of that line, and he does a super job for him. Didn't play as well as he wanted to last year. Played through a lot of pain with a shoulder problem. Finally had surgery in the offseason. Ernie, over the middle, he's got his man, but Tyrone McQueen cannot make the grab. Ron Perryman might have deflected that ball just enough. He sure did, and he did an excellent job from a linebacker position. Ernie's looking to throw back here. He's sprinting right, throwing, pulling up and throwing back, and he's looking to come across. Watch this. He's looking to the front side. He pulls up right here, and he turns. He's going to throw back, but Perryman, 32, has good position and he gets up to make the play. Excellent job for a linebacker to get that kind of depth and make the play on a crossing receiver behind him. So a good play from Perryman. His brother Robert plays his football for the New England Patriots and Ernie to the air again, and this time he's throwing it all the way downfield to about the 37-yard line of Boston College. It is incomplete. The intended receiver, Randy Jackson, Supplying the coverage out there, Jeff Baker, number 38. They tested Baker. He's the new guy in the secondary, the senior out of Bethune, Massachusetts. He's a fifth-year senior. He was a backup. He's an excellent athlete. They tried to beat him deep right away. He was there. Jeff Baker comes through. Bill Chesna then will make his second punt of the afternoon. No pressure and a weak punt. There, there, the white cap is head coach Jack McNell, who has his roots right here in the New Jersey area. Assistant coach at Boston College, went on to become the head coach at Maine and came back to uh, B.C. in 1981. He's from North Plainfield, New Jersey. He went to Montclair State here in Jersey. Mike Sanders, a couple yards on the right side, and... All fired up there is Joe Savoy. He was pushed back from his starting position this week to a backup tackle slot. They like to play Savoy in the early downs against the run. He's very tough against the run. He's a veteran. This is his final season. They can't use him in the later downs when they've got a passing situation. He doesn't give you the rush, and that's why they, they're starting to move Scotty Miller in there, Kofitsis is a nose guard, and Chuck Paul. But he's good against the run. That time he made a big play. So it's 8.34 to go. Holding call, apparently against Boston College. So they take All the right. penalty, they push him back, they want to get better field position, sure. put some pressure on him, and now Camp House is looking for one of the few times in his ball game at early down long yardage. And for the first time, he's going to have the football and a chance to throw with a fairly dry ball because the rain has stopped pretty much. Campos to Frazier. Frazier goes the other way, and look at him, Mick. Wow. Out to about the 46-yard line. And Frazier made a quick look to his left, saw about four red jerseys, went the opposite way, and moves it all the way up to about the 47-yard line. Good call. Roberts good. and Vaughn McCoy there. Yeah, good save pass. A single back. They just slide it out to him real quick. It's almost like he's going to get behind a screen. But look at him reverse. They call him explosive. They say he's he's quick and exciting. Boy, that's what he's all about. That's a great move on his part to turn what looked like a loss into a gain. And now there's second down and uh, about four yards. And a 5.3 yard per carry average last season. This time, it, uh, this time it's Sanders. Tripped up by Sean Williams. And that just can't happen. You're first down and 20. You turn one play, turns it around. They come back, make yardage. They get a first down. Now all of a sudden, from a, a deficit situation, Rutgers defense finds himself with the ball in their territory. Joe Savoy 
plaguing him all year. Excuse no me. question about it. That's Joseph Oy, number 78, who's being attended to by the uh, trainers for Rutgers. No, you're right. Looked like for a moment Rutgers uh, had BC and just where they wanted them, but uh, a quick pass, and before you know it, uh, they're out of damage zone, and uh, very quickly they're in Rutgers territory at the, officially the 48-yard line now. First down, Boston College. They lead 7-0. 7 7-17 seven, to go for the half. This time, though, Sanders in trouble in the backfield, and James Jenkins gets the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Jenkins, the junior from Staten Island. And they like this kid, don't they, Bob? They like him a lot, but the guy who makes the play is Scotty Miller, number 99. He gets the penetration. He has the quickness. They're expecting him to arrive. See number 99 get right up in the face. He creates Jenkins to the, the, the back to hesitate, and from the outside, Jenkins makes the play. They've got to get Scotty Miller into their defensive scheme. They lost him last year to a knee injury. He's been slow returning to the form of the past so far this year. So Miller and Jenkins combined, a loss of four yards, and again, Rutgers defense comes up big. That's Pat Yudovich, who stops Sanders. And Rutgers defense coming alive. They've been on the field a lot today, and they've been... Uh, sort of giving and giving, but they really haven't broken except for the first drive when BC got their score, but they can't stay on there forever, but they're doing their job. They just got to get the ball back, and the offense got to get in there and take some pressure off them. So third and 13 for BC. Nick Anderson looking on, very disappointed last week in the performance of his defense, up front especially. We're not getting off the blocks. They are right now. But a big third and 13 play. Mike Sanders again. Lots of room, but he is tackled by Darren Sellers. Short of first down yardage. Interesting, though, that uh, Jack McNell did not put the ball up on third and long. He elected to go with the draw play. Almost got the first down. Kept it on the ground. Did not put the ball up. That's Darren Sellers, the man to wrap up Sanders there, who's dinged a little bit. Good job by Toner, the fullback, 35, and the linebacker, Yudovich, which springs the back. But in the open field, that's what you got to get to stop people from getting touchdowns and first downs. And Darren Sellers, the veteran, made the play. Sellers, the kind of guy who uh, really inspires the defense, the holler guy out there, plays with reckless abandon. Co-captain on his football team. Picked one off in last year's Boston College game. Game Rutgers won 17 to 6. So Brian Lowe is on for the Eagles to punt. McCoy and Roberts, you can see Lowe, a barefooted kicker and punter. <laughs> we want to tell you too that the uh, announcers for this game are selected and compensated by JP Sports. This broadcast, a copyright presentation, any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Boston College. Rutgers University is prohibited. That's Jimmy Can, who's going nowhere. Kelly is there, along with Perryman. And a loss of one on the play. Again, the running game, so hard to create when you don't have that blocker on the corner in the tight end position. That time they tried to get Jimmy Conn to the outside into the boundary, and Kelly, the experienced linebacker, came right up inside, made the play, and really threw him for a short loss. Actually, it's second down and about ten and a half yards. So Can goes out. It's Giles in the backfield. Rolling out Ernie. Hits Tyrone McQueen. Tries to put a move on Rico Lobby. Brought down at the 37-yard line. Rico Lobby, one of the leaders on his football team, the real intimidator. Says he likes to try to keep that defense on an emotional high. Says that uh, they've got a lot of emotional players on defense. This defense perhaps the most experienced, maybe the best defense Jack Bicknell has ever had at Boston College in his time. Third and three, seven-yard pickup. Ernie again. He's got lots of pressure, but gets it off incomplete. That was Gary Melton, and he should have had that football. Well, we've uh, been down a little bit on Scott Ernie, but that time he got out of pressure as he sprinted out. Came up, got his shoulders around, made the play, and Melton should have handled it. Watch this. He's sprinting to his left. There's pressure inside. He brings the ball down. He gets away from uh, Lobby coming up from his strong safety position on a blitz. 
Belton should have handled that. That was a first down. And again, the Rutgers offense stalling now, giving the ball back to BC with field position, with still time on the clock, and putting their defense, which has been out there. Go! Oh, the rain uh, not stopping the Boston College band from having a good time here. You can see by the total yardage that uh, they've got a reason to be happy about what's happened so far. Boston College almost tripling Rutgers in total yardage. And here's one major reason why. Timmy Frazier again, and the holes that BC offensive line makes continue to get larger, it seems. It's tough on the early downs like that when you can give up uh, eight, seven, eight yards. All of a sudden, the offense is in great situations. Puts a lot of pressure on your defense. They've done it with their tailback with the rushing offense as you look at what's coming up at halftime. We'll take a look back to last week, what happened in football around the East. Take a look at Ed O'Neill, the assistant coach for Dick Anderson in charge of linebackers. Take a look at all the scores in college football on this day. And Frazier breaks loose from Darren Sellers there. Just enough yardage to get the first down. Camp house to Frazier. And you got to believe with 3.14 on the clock, ball up over their own 40-yard line, we'll start to see Jack Bicknell open this offense a little bit, try and get upfield, get another score just before half. House, uh, who last year had that severe break of the jaw, said, gee, I don't know if I'm ever coming back, but he did make it back. Played the last couple of games of last season, and he won the starting job over Willie Hicks and Mike Power this summer. Trying to gain some confidence as Frazier just bowls his way forward. A flag dropped down the play. Okay, that time they came up with two tight ends and a flanker. That gives them the ability to run either side with the two tight ends as blockers. They got good yardage inside, but there's a penalty. It's going to go against BC. But they're starting to wear on them a little bit, starting to get in there. The thing to remember, though, no matter how much yardage they have, they are only ahead by one touchdown. Rutgers is within reach, and a turnover here. Field position can change this around. Very important now for Rutgers to not give them any more points before the half. If they can hold them within the seven points, I think they're going to go in at halftime feeling, hey, it's anybody's ball. Sure. Penalties uh, hurting both clubs today. As we look at Dick Anderson talking to Ed O'Neill right there. A couple of Penn State guys. Less than three minutes to go for the half. Seven nothing. Boston College on top of Rutgers. Mike Sanders, and again, a Mack truck-sized hole there. Mike Bouchard gets credit for the stop on Sanders as he moves the ball out to about the 41-yard line. Getting good yardage off tackle. Running behind Kennedy and Jovanovic as we look at Mike Sanders, 117 yards in the first half on 12 rushes with one TD. He's been the, the story offensively for BC in his first half. You mentioned Jovanovic and Kennedy, the two guys that really... Coach Bicknell was most concerned about coming in here today because they uh, were manhandled last week by Pitt's defensive line. Frazier on the pitch, and he just keeps those legs moving. Sellers kind of trips him up. Again, it comes back to the point that was made by Dick Anderson, the coach of Rutgers, that his defensive down people cannot have not been able to get off blocks and get up into the into the ball carry and that's what's happening now the offensive line is maintaining their blocks and giving those backs like sanders and fraser a chance to cut and you're in trouble because as you look up you got strong safeties making tackles cornerbacks making tackles they're only making tackles because those guys are gaining big yardage all right big play third and four for boston college on their own 48-yard line, Camphouse wants to throw, lets it loose, and it is intercepted. Intercepted by Rutgers on their 35-yard line by Ivan Mays, the junior, on a free hold, no jersey. Not much of a pass on the part of Camphouse. The receiver was open. He just threw it up and high and away, and Mays playing back in his zone in his third makes the catch. Watch this. Drop back action. He's looking to the left side. The receiver's going to come back, turn back to the ball. Well overthrown. Mays just in the right position to make the play. Rutgers defense again steps in and stops BC. The Rutgers defense hands the ball to Scott Ernie with a minute and 31 to go. The rollout, the toss, and he misfires. Looking for Jim Garantano. And you're hearing a few boos from the 
stands right now, aimed at uh, number seven. He's not had a good first half. It's been tough because of the weather conditions, but he's overthrown people, thrown the ball behind. That time the ball was clearly overthrown in the flat to Guarantino. Scott Ernie, the two-time Rutgers most valuable player. More than 5,000 passing yards in his career. So far, not one of his more memorable afternoons. Quick drop, and this time gets his man, Garantano, still on his feet, finally wrestled down at about the 40-yard line by Ron Perryman. And that's what they want to do. They want to get it to the wide receiver, Guarantano, who comes out, number 18, out of a fine spring. They're going without a huddle here. Get the ball outside to him. Let him get upfield, get yardage one-on-one -on, -one on the secondary. So a 24-yard gain at the BC 40. As you can see, clock at about 117. Ernie again. All kinds of time. Going long to the sidelines, looking for Garantano, and just kind of overthrew him there. I'm not so sure he was uh, well, trying to do anything other than throw it beyond him. Last time in a similar situation, he threw it up for grabs, got the interception. That time he was smart enough to realize because BC has a nickel back in there. They're really rushing with three, defending with eight. That time he just threw the ball away. Good coverage by Boston College. Rutgers really important here to try and get a little closer, maybe come away with some points before the half. Dick Anderson wants to get on that board. He's trailing 7-0. Ah, that was Ivan Caesar coming in from his outside linebacker spot, but Ernie gets it off in a nice grab by Garantano at about the 24-yard line. So Garantano with two grabs here from Ernie. That one with 17, the one two plays ago, worth 24 yards. A minute and one to go. Time is out while they move the chains, and time is back in under a minute to go for the half and Ernie trying to spark an offense Tyrone McQueen does not get out of bounds that's Rico Lobby who pops him in a hurry what a great play by Lobby in the open field coming up on McQueen cut him short for a very short gain and never permitted him to get out of bounds and force Rutgers to take a timeout so timeout Rutgers 46 seconds to go as their offense finally comes alive here. And it's been Ernie and Garantano who made the difference the last couple of minutes. And here's the sprint out, and this is a great play by Garantano. Watch this catch, you can't do it any better. Excellent execution, Ernie comes through, makes the play, watch that. Wow, great catch. Garantano, again, we said, was a standout in spring practice, really arrived. He's only 5'11", 175, not particularly fast, flat out, but very quick with good hands. Fabulous, fabulous catch. Garantano, sophomore of Lodi, New Jersey. There's the timeout situation, very important with 46 ticks left on the clock here in the second period. Rutgers has two remaining. Dick Anderson's club, so hungry, eh? Talked to the guys yesterday about the two ties that they've suffered through, and they said, yeah, we should have won both ball games. And they should have. And if they can tie it at halftime, they might... Uh... They feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Ernie, of course, to the air. He's got McQueen inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Johnson makes the stop. Big 39 play. seconds to go. Big play by McQueen. He came back to catch the ball and turned back inside and had enough sense to know where that first down marker was, and he got it. The Rutgers crowd here at Giant Stadium. Excited for the first time, and Ernie finds McQueen again, but it's incomplete. And that time, credit Rico Lobby for a big hit. That's exactly the same play that Lobby came up with, and it takes too much time to develop because Lobby now playing man coverage plays very tight. He's a very aggressive football player, and watch him come up on the football. Go into his left, sprinting away from the pressure. There's the timing of it. There's Lobby. Tough to catch the football, and he has a nose for it. Rico Lobby, terrific play third straight year as a starter for Boston College in that defensive backfield. 32 seconds to go. It's second and 10. Ernie sees 
Bowser on top of him. Let's it go for the end zone. A flag is dropped. The ball is caught by Johnson. There's going to be interference here, whether it's offensive or defense is going exactly. to be interesting. Somebody pushed off down there, and I saw, I thought Randy Jackson fall to the turf just before Johnson made the grab. This is a big call, a big call for Rutgers. Tough call to go against D.C. Here it is. That's what it is. Defensive holding. Somebody held back there. I believe it's going to happen in the end zone. See if our cameras pick it up. Sprint away, throw back to the right here as he puts the ball up, and it's not a great pass, but watch it in the end zone. There it is. There's the contact. David Johnson. David Johnson, who comes in at the strong safety position or comes in as an added defensive back in passing situations, got called. So a huge play for Rutgers. They get the first down and half the distance to the goal. So with 24 seconds to go, they've got the football on the seven-yard line. Confusion at the line of scrimmage. Oh you my. saw the contact. Oh you saw the flags. Going to be moving against, Rut against Rutgers, I would guess. That should never happen. Experienced football team, a quarterback, an offensive line that time. The snap count was off. They made the mistake. It's going to push him back. He's looking for the football. It's the center never snaps the ball. Confusion. Mistakes. Dead because ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Still first down. That hurts. It hurts because it pushes him back. He's still got plenty of time, 24 seconds left. They're spreading the field again because of their lack of tight end strength. Many times in this situation, instead of running the football when they're getting close, they're forced to throw. This drive began at the Rutgers 36. Still first down and goal now from just outside the 11-yard line. That's McQueen in motion. Ernie gets it off, and McQueen can't handle it, just drops the football. That was a good call. McQueen had man-for-man -man coverage. The linebacker, Kelly, 92, was trying to cover him. He was three steps behind him that time. He had him beat on the sideline, couldn't make the play. Interesting, though, Rutgers decided to drop back in that action. They've been sprinting with Ernie to get away from the pressure. They dropped him back, gave him maximum protection, looked for McQueen crossing. He was there, dropped the football. McQueen also would have had a good chance to get out of bounds in that situation as well. Good point. 20 seconds to go for the half. Again, BC leads 7-0. Rutgers wants to get in, going for the end zone, but overthrowing Randy Jackson is Scott Ernie, and that's Brian Williams, number 43, right on top of Jackson. Jackson was outside, never had position. Brian Williams, a veteran, the great speed, the two-year starter. Williams out of Moeller High School in Cincinnati, and BC has had several players from there. Watch this from the low angle. Watch Williams step for step. Great position. Looks back to the football. Can't do it any better. There was a push, but it was awfully late. This is good, good coverage right here because Jackson is out of bounds. Third down and goal again. McQueen, Garantano, and Jackson are your receivers. Who will he go to? To the end zone, incomplete, intended for McQueen, almost picked off by Eddie Duran. That's a, that was a great call and tremendous defensive play by the veteran Duran. They took McQueen, flanked him wide to the left side, to the right side of the screen here. They're going to bring him deep across the end zone here, but watch the free safety, the experienced Duran come in, and watch the timing on that as he makes the play. He looks open, Duran saw it all the way, forcing Rutgers now to try and get at least Three. So three shots from the 11, none of them come through for Scott Ernie and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. So Doug Giesler is on 28-yard attempt. He made a couple last week, one from 28, and this one barely makes it. End over end. Did that get hit at the line? End over end, spiral, whatever it is, but it's three points and they'll take it. Wow. That thing just barely cleared. Not a lot of oomph behind it, but Giesler equals his longest of the year which was 28 yards. So Rutgers is on the board, and I guess uh, better three than nothing as far as Dick Anderson's concerned. Oh, I'm sure of that, and it's going to be a bolster, uh, give his uh, defense a little chance to say, hey, we held him, we've, we've met him in the first half, and we're very much in this ball game. Eight seconds to go in the half as Geisler connects. Give Rutgers their first points of the afternoon. Seven to three, Boston College. 
and we're still waiting for the skies to clear, the sun to come out, but I got a feeling it's not going to happen today, and it's a good thing everybody came prepared. They got their slickers on here, the umbrellas. But the rain has really let up. It's really a very fine mist at times, and I think it's permitted them now to get back into their, the, the normal routine of the game. They're starting to throw the ball, perhaps catch the ball a little better. So we should see a wide open second half. If the weather holds off, we certainly should. Frazier and Graf, Bart Graf, back to receive. That is Geisler, number four. We'll probably just have time for the kickoff. Kind of a line drive shot up the middle. That is Graf, number 40, who used to play football at Rutgers. Sat out last year, transferring to Boston College. Sellers makes the hit down there. Second to go in the half, and I guess they will get off one play. There's Dick Anderson. I think he's got to feel good. The way they started off the first drive, BC getting a touchdown and him looking at a long first half and then realizing now as he goes in at halftime, only trailing 7-3, to three, he's got to get his offense together, keep his defense alive. They're very much in this ballgame. One final play for the half, and it's a handoff to Sanders, who grinds over tackle for three or four yards. He may be a factor in the second half because he is an outstanding athlete. Mark Chamora, number 89, the tight end. And as we look out of our uh, position here in the 50-yard line at Giants Stadium, I'm sorry to tell you, I see mist again beginning to fall. So I think it's going to be with us on and off all day long. And number 89 is the gentleman that... Uh, Bob was just referring to, Mark Chamora, and Bob McNell, number 84, talking to him there. The backup tied in, and yes, that is the son of head coach Jack McNell. The second son to play for Jack McNell. That's right. His, uh, his son Jackie was a starting center on a bowl team for him, and Jackie now is an assistant football coach at the University of New Hampshire. Boston College, Brian Lowe kicks it off. Jimmy Can inside his own 10, right up the middle, still on his feet, driven down at the 37-yard line. 31-yard return. And that's what you like about yeah. Jimmy Can. He puts excitement into the ball game. He's a determined athlete. You had a good conversation with him. Yeah, we did. He really uh, expressed a lot of optimism about the future of this football team. Uh, said, hey. We know we're good. We know we can beat Boston College. We played the same football team, largely uh, composed of the same players, at least on defense. We feel good about what we have to do, and we can beat them and will beat them. So far, though, BC with a 7-3 advantage. Rutgers the football, and Giles the carry across the 40. He's brought down by four Boston College tacklers. Matt Kelly probably got the biggest piece of them on the near side. How interesting. They put the tight end. Scott Blanche to the right side of the formation. They run a, a uh, sweep away from him into the sideline, and they make good yardage. Very interesting, deceiving, trying to change perhaps the keys for B.C. Second and four. Still no body. It's Giles and Can in the backfield. And Can gets the call. Chris Gilday wraps him up at the 44. Okay, so coming out with the run in the second half right away, trying to get at him, get first downs, get some field position, utilizing their backs in the running game. Rutgers, as we've mentioned, began this year with a tie against Cincinnati, came back with a tie against Ball State. Haven't done that since 1910. Third and two. Giles has got it and did so. Inside the BC 45 where Rico Lobby shoulders him to the turf. Again, running back away into the sideline, back away from the wide side of the field, the strength of the formation, little toss, they motion back, they get on the corner quickly, good block on the corner by 15, Melton coming in from the, the flanker position, which gave him permission to give him a chance to get upfield and get another first down. Giles, 5'10", 195, 12-yard run. First down, Rutgers, the BC, 44, and Jimmy Can sees some daylight. Eddie Duran, tackled.
tackles him at about the 35. So the running game for Rutgers beginning to show some life. Little counter here. Gets the ball deep. He breaks, starts to his right, breaks back to his left, follows number 76, high roast the tackle into the hole, gets into the secondary and forces the safety to make the hit. So Jimmy can with an eight-yard gain. It's second and two. As the Scarlet Knights are pushing BC around a little bit here in the opening minutes of the second half. And as I say that, Boston College comes up with a good defensive play. Ivan Caesar makes the tackle pressure applied by Jim Beestick. He sure did. Beestick, the big tackle, got penetration. Never gave him a chance to get upfield to make the cut. And uh, here's a third and short, but they're in the four-down zone. Rutgers is very important here as we look at uh, number 59, Gilday, the nose tackle on the sideline. Getting a little breather. And back in the ball game for the first time in a long time is Mike Body, along with Giles and Can. They give to Can, and they just pump him right up the middle, looking for that one yard, and they've got it for the first down. Interesting, because of this tight end situation, Rutgers, whenever they go into two tights, double tight, short yardage, as you look at Jack McNell on that sideline, they bring in number 60. Uh, offensive tackle Mitchell, and they put him at the tight end position as a blocker. That time they utilized him, got a first down. Bill Milano, the big senior tackle, doing a good job in this first offensive series of the second half, and Ernie will continue on the ground. Ivan Caesar, not fool there, brings Can down for a loss. Caesar is a good story, Bob, out of the Virgin Islands, a kid who is, has really come on for BC. Came in here, had natural athletic ability, not much coaching background necessarily, was a tight end and a fine tight end, but wanted to play defense and talked his way in to playing on the, in the, uh, on the defense, wanted to be an outside linebacker, and in the minds of Jack McNell and his staff, he is the guy that can make it happen. He can make the big play for you. They call him, believe it or not, Julius. <laughs> Which makes some sense, I guess. Lost a two on that last play, and another loss here on the second and 12. And again, can crack down this time by Mike Marinero. Just kind of grabbed him. They were trying. They, they're trying to run the delay of the counter stuff, which worked effectively in the first two series here. But they came back to two of these plays as you watch Marinero right in front of your screen, number 62. But this time, they're getting penetration. And when they start to get penetration upfield, it doesn't give you a chance to counter or get up into the seams. In the last two plays, they've thrown Rutgers for losses. There is a player down on the field. I believe it's uh, Bill Heroes, the senior tackle. Looks like he's okay, trotting over to the uh, Rutgers bench. Dave Clark will come in to uh, take Hero's spot on the line. So it's third and 13. You would guess that Dick Anderson has to go to the air here with Scott Ernie. They've got three, make it four receivers in the ball game, and your single setback is Mike Body. They fake it to him. Pearson pressure, but Ernie will run. 25 to the 21-yard line, and I think he's got the first down. So we showed you the highlight a minute ago from the first half where he was able to see the opening and take advantage of it. Does the same thing here, and this is a mighty big play, good for 14 yards. Watch this little fake. He comes down on that sprint. The end comes upfield, contains him that time, uh, but forces, and, and forces him back inside, but everybody else disappears. The linebackers are covering people, and consequently, Scott Ernie turned it on. He is an outstanding athlete, and that time he proved it. Key first down. 6'1", 195, told me yesterday he put on 10 pounds of muscle on his upper body in the offseason. And speaking of body, there's Mike Body, who is crunched by Kevin Pearson, the senior out of Andover, New Jersey. David Johnson also helped out. Tough. When you come up on the early downs, you want to get yardage. You want to get some yardage. Granted, as you move down the field, it gets tougher because the field gets less and confined. But when you come up first and 10 on the 21-yard line and you end up second down and 12, you're well behind schedule. Ernie, the sprint out, loses his balance, gets it off, but look out, up for anybody, and it's in. Complete and Rutgers is very, very lucky. Ernie got hit very slow to get up. 
just did get up there. That was Ivan Caesar right in his face, and that ball just kind of tumbled out of Ernie's hands. It was up for grab. Watch Caesar here, 88. Here he comes up, plays off the block and the grab by the fullback. The blocker there and just gets up in his face. You can't do it any better. Ernie was very fortunate to come away. Ciolo along with you. Quarterback comparison. With both guys uh, thrown interceptions so far today. You'd like to think that uh, Ernie right now will go up top again on a big third and 12. Six defensive backs in the ball game for Boston College. Ball the 22-yard line, and this ball is deflected up in the air, and Kelly makes the interception for Boston College. BC comes up with a big play. They came up with a big gamble, too. They blitzed one of those defensive backs. They brought Dave Johnson from the corner, and he hit Ernie's arm just as he was about to deliver it and made the big play. That is defense, and they played it. Watch from the left side of the screen. Here's Ernie ready to set up. There's 44 getting right in his face. That's Dave Johnson, the senior out of West Berlin, New Jersey. He came on the rush that time. They gambled and it paid off. Big, big play as Matt Kelly, who's made his presence known all over the field this afternoon. Scott Gurney, Ernie, Scott Ernie saying, what the heck is going on out here? Third turnover of the afternoon for Rutgers at 10 on the year in under three games. Mike Sanders gets the call. Good for about three as Boston College's offense called upon again. And Ernie kind of shaking his head, Bob. Shaking his head. What hurts there is they came away with no points. A good drive. They took the uh, second half kickoff, drove down the field. At least they should have had a shot at three, get a little bit closer. Instead, they took time off the clock, came away with nothing. Held the ball for six minutes here in the third quarter. And as you say, shut down in the points column. Kelly having a heck of a game. Second and five for the Eagles. Camphouse Fires. He's got Ray Hilbert. Darren Sellers right there to meet him. Help from Udovich. So Camphouse connects with Hilbert. A couple of guys from Cincinnati Moeller High School, by one of the great football high schools in America. Last year he had Waddle, who was such an outstanding receiver for throughout his career at uh, Boston College. Another Moeller high, uh, high School product. This time it was Hilbert. Uh, Boston College has done very well with Moeller High School graduates in their football program. Third and one. Ed Toner gets it done. First down yardage, and that's a situation where you're always going to see Ed Toner in the ball game. Scott Miller wrapped him up. Toner, six feet, 229. He's their short yardage guy. In fact, he scored uh, on a one-yard plunge against Pittsburgh last weekend. He scored a touchdown in each of his last six games and six of the seven touchdowns he scored last year were off from the one-yard line. So he's the guy they want when they got to get a yard. At the time they came out with two tight ends and a full house backfield, slipped the ball to Toner and got the first down. And uh, very important here for BC to sustain something offensively. They really have uh, floundered since that first score early in the first period. And also for Camp House, he needs to build his confidence a little bit. He's been executing, handling, handing the ball off to his tailback. But as far as throwing the football, he really hasn't done it yet today. There's an injured player. It's Chuck Paw. For Rutgers, a defensive lineman who is on his feet. A little wobbly, but under his own power. Heading for the sideline. First down for BC on their own 44. Just under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Eagles lead seven to three. Toner, your fullback. Sanders, the tailback. Sanders, the football. And Jenkins comes up to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. Good play. They needed that kind of play. They held him up on the line of scrimmage. They never gave him a chance to make the cut. Jenkins is a story unto himself. At 6'3", 235, came here as a tight end uh, from locally here in Staten Island, New York. Played a tight end some this year. Went over to defense because of his quickness. And he's done a good job for him. And this is his third game as a, as a defensive player. And O'Neill, the linebacker's coach, told me he's one of the best tight ends he's ever had. Ever seen, even. Going back to his days in the NFL. But... Jenkins wanted to play defense. They had a real need there. And Sanders up the gut, close to midfield. Joe Savoy gets credit for the tackle. 
some of the fans. How you doing? As you can see, the rain has uh, let up for the moment anyway. Early in this game with the rain coming down, they went back underneath the yeah, cover of the did. stands. Now they're starting to come out a little bit. Get into it. They should. The game is 7-3. Go any, either way for either team. No question about it. Cherry and Skerritt. Your wideouts. Along with Giles. Camphouse will keep it. And Camphouse gets the first down yardage. That was... Fidel, who came up, and Udovich that could not stop Camphouse from gaining the yardage. So first down, Boston College. Camphouse, again, shows a good poise here. Good poise. That time Rutgers came with a three-man rush, dropped eight. Good coverage. Camphouse, the experienced quarterback, saw that and elected to run the football. Just got enough for the first down, kept the drive alive. Just enough. 45-yard line of Rutgers. 6-12 to go here in the third. Gives it to Toner. He's in trouble. Lester sacks him back in Boston College territory. And Pete Kavitsis also in there to pressure Toner. Good job by Timmy Lester. He made two big plays in the first half that uh, created a situation where Rutgers got the ball back. This is a, He's trying to slip the ball on a little draw play from the single back set. 74 gets penetration right away. Kavitsis and Lester coming from the defensive line outside linebacker position makes the hit. Big play, second down, long yardage. So Pete Gavitsis from Clifton, New Jersey, his first start. Promoted to the lineup today. Loss of six. Second and 16 for the Eagles. Sanders looking for a room, doesn't find too much. Spidell, the tackle. Good play by the defensive line that time. Interesting how Boston College so far this afternoon in second or third and long elects to run the football. That time they, they handed the ball to the tailback on second down and 16. Got back some yardage. Have not put the ball up many times in that situation today. You can see that uh, Boston College clearly keeping to the ground. Third and 10. Sanders is split to the near side. Big rush and goes down. Chuck Paw sneaks through and makes a huge defensive play for the Scarlet Knights. And took advantage of the thing that hurt BC last week, the blocking on the corner by the offensive tackle. Watch Paw from the left-hand side. He beats the tackle. 70 Four minutes here in the third quarter. Bob Cassiola, I think that defensively Rutgers has shown some things here, particularly here early in the second half. And now it's up to the offense to do their part. Defensively, Rutgers has done the job. They've stopped them since that first early score by BC. The offense has just floundered there all afternoon, and quite frankly, they got to get it going in a tough field position right now. And the rain is back, too, but Ernie will throw nonetheless. At least try to find a receiver, but uh-uh, he is down. Driven to the turf, Jim Beastick. Ernie lost his footing. Beastick was there, and Rutgers now will have to go to a second down situation with the ball inside their own 10 and the rain coming down. To get back to what we've repeated, the early downs. In the words of Dick Anderson, the early downs are important. They create a situation for you. You've got to get certain things happening on both sides of the ball. Offensively, Rutgers tried to come out in the, in the second half and run the ball. This first possession, they try to change up. First and 10 on that 20, throw the ball. Big loss. Now they're in a hole. White Giles. Not good for much. Ron Perryman wraps him up. Gain of two at best. It's a very was a very important sequence. The defense stopped them. They had the football. Now they're looking at third and long yardage. If they don't get a first down here, they're going to be forced to punt and give BC the kind of field position that makes it very difficult when you have the explosive offense that they are noted for in this situation. Sets up a third and 18. Just dumps it off. That is Giles. Bursts across the 20 where Kelly and Caesar get together to uh, make the stop. So Rutgers will have to punt this football away. Scott Ernie got pressure from the outside. BC took a chance, came after, put pressure. And two Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. East Rutherford, New Jersey. Yeah, guys, having fun? Good to be out here today. Huh? Better wet. 
and wild. And the rain still coming. It, it's real fine, a real fine miss. That might have been the problem for Marcus Cherry, who we thought should have caught that punt and uh, fielded it up at about the 40, elected to let it drop. Might have had some problem with the rain. Camphouse fires. The strike incomplete. That ball intended for Bob Bicknell, the coach's kid. You know, good story about him. Talking to Jack yesterday, and he was telling me a story that uh, years ago, not, not Bob, but his other son, Jack Jr., came into the office and said, Dad, I need five bucks. Can you help me out? I, I get, need some money. He said, Coach, I said, Son, I can't do it. It's NCAA regulations. It's, it's against the rules, so I can't give you any money. He said, That's the same way he treats his son, Bob, who's now in the program. So no money for the kid. It's a good app for Jack, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Minute 47 to go in the third. Timmy Frazier. Ooh, hit straight up at Udovich. That's the way you got to play it. What Rutgers did earlier was they overflowed with the flow of the back, and particularly Frazier, and then he had the cutback. That time the linebacker stayed at home, made the hit. And again, the Rutgers defense is doing the job in the early downs now. They've got an opportunity here. If they can stop D.C. and force them to punt, they may have a chance to get better field position. I talk about that all the time. It's so essential in a tight football game. No question about it. Second and seven. D.C. ball on their own 30. Camp House out of the pocket, firing incomplete. That ball intended for Cherry, their number one receiver, but good defensive coverage by the Rutgers secondary, including that man, number one, Ron Allen. And also number 37, Sellers. Watch this. Both of them come down. They split. They, they switch as they come down. They cross. He comes back to the football. He's got this football, but watch the collision after he catches it. From one side, number one, Allen. From the other side, Sellers. And, they, and he did not hold on to it. Big play by the secondary. So Marcus Cherry, so far today, shut out. Has yet to catch a ball. Marshall Roberts, the punt return. Face mask. Driven out of bounds. There's a face mask. No question about it on the sideline. We can see it here. Rico Lobby came over there to nail him. The Rutgers sideline jacked up right now. Let's watch it again. You'll see it clearly, I believe. Marshall Roberts, a sophomore. Great speed. Plays on the cornerback. There it is. Number four, Lobby playing their 999th football game. A history that goes back to 1869 when Rutgers played Princeton. And Bob, were you were you coaching Princeton at that time? Or? I wasn't there, but our uh, statistician, excuse me, our spotter was there. Bill, Bill Briel was there. He was there. there forever. <laughs> Doing the spotting. Mike Body. Right the right side. Gets to about three, maybe four. Rutgers, by the way, uh, I believe won that game, 6-4. Yeah. Let's go on. We're, yeah. we're in 1989 right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 120-some years later, they're still playing football. And right now, Rutgers trying to extend their winning streak against Boston College. And you can see, folks, uh, the rain. There are moments. College uh, Eagle came prepared. Got his slicker on. Looks like he's got shoulder pads. Oh, I see. He's got his hands up. Very tricky. And there's the uh, Scarlet Knight who needs no such protection, apparently. The real Scarlet Knights trying to get the job done as we begin the fourth quarter. They trail 7-3, and Ernie to the air. Incomplete pass. That ball intended for Gary Melton over the middle. Tough third down situation that time. He didn't come through as we look at the third quarter stats, and BC continues to have a decided advantage rushing the football, but they only lead by four points, 7-3. And passing yardage for Rutgers, 84 yards. But he got a quarterback like Scott Ernie. Very unusual. Had 297 yards in the air last week in that tie against Ball State. Chesna on to punt. The rain coming down a little harder. Tries to do a little pooch kick inside the 20. Might get a good roll. But, oh, very close. Do they get it? No. No, boy, that was very, very close. And how big would that have been if they could have downed it inside the three-yard line like that? 39-yard kick, a great effort by Chesna, Bob. Great effort by Chesna. He's done an excellent job today. He's a fine athlete. Watch this. The ball bounces perfectly. Good bat here by number 92 for Rutgers. Kicks the ball back. 
And that momentum of the two guys coming in from the backside carries it into the end zone. That was Sean Williams down there trying to grab that ball just before it snuck into the end zone. Don't forget, next week from Mikey Stadium, West Point, Wake Forest out of the ACC will tackle the cadets. Should be a pretty good ball game. First and ten, Boston College. 14.46 to go, and Spidell hits Sanders hard at the line. Make it toner. Start off with the fullback that time, and the, the defensive line is starting to penetrate now. They're starting to get a little bit across that line of scrimmage and not give those backs, whether it be the fullback, the tailback, the cutback, as Dick Anderson looks on. He knows he's got to get the ball back. He's got to get it in a reasonable field position. The weather is dictating that. But they still got a shot. This defense has come alive, particularly here in the second half. Toner and Sanders in the eye formation. Sanders. And he is hit again. Pat Udovich makes the initial pop. Pat said last week against Ball State, we were bad. There's a big hit by Udovich, but it shows you how good a back Sanders is. Watch Udovich come off the play, come up, makes the hit there, and Sanders propels himself, picks up another three yards on his own. Makes it third and five. And another big play for Boston College. Rutgers would like to stop him here and get the ball back in good field position. 13.30 to go. Campos, quick drop, quick throw, cherry, incomplete pass. Sellers on the coverage. Combination pattern, wide receiver runs a fly pattern, inside receiver runs a quick out. Sellers with his experience at good field position forced Campos to elevate the ball. Tough play, couldn't do it. Rutgers defense turns the ball back. Couple of scores for you. Virginia coming off the big win last week up on Georgia Tech at the third, 17-7. Low with the punt. Rutgers went after it, and Sellers barely missed. That's McCoy, and it's 30. Going backwards, finally forwards, and out of bounds. Throwing his body to the turf out there. There's a flag on the play. Brian Lowe, whose right foot I'm sure is awfully soggy about now. 47-yard punt and a 9-yard. Coming off a couple of ties. He's got 13 minutes and 9 seconds to work his way into the lead. At this point, a tie does not appear likely, but uh, stranger things have happened, I guess. Right now, though, he's got poor field position. Ernie, though, finds his man. That is Gary Milton. Up to the 35-yard line. So very quickly, first down yardage. Ernie connects with Melton despite the rain coming down. Melton, the kid, really came on. Dick Curl told us yesterday in uh, spring ball last year, Bob. As Temple uh, is trailing Penn State out Happy Valley. And here West Virginia is leading. Maryland leading Western Michigan. Getting back to that pass, Gary Melton. He kept his feet. The defensive back couldn't. And there's Army with their wishbone. And they'll give you fits, as we mentioned earlier. Syracuse trailing in the first period. First down, Rutgers. Jimmy Can just dives across where Kelly grabs him and pulls him to the turf. Gain of three, maybe four. It was a good call early on. Uh, Rutgers had the ball on the, deep in their territory. They came out on first down. They opened up right away, threw the ball. A good pass. Melton caught it, got him upfield. Now they got a chance to operate. The ball's just short of their 40-yard line. They can really run any part of their offense. The wind kicking up here, a little bit of mist still falling. And at this point, if you're a head coach, you're saying, let's not make a mistake. But that will cost you right about now. Jimmy Can again, Matt Kelly again. We keep calling Kelly's name. Kelly's outstanding. He's. Uh, he, we talked about the great li long line of linebackers. Bill Romanowski playing for the 49ers was a great one here. And you know, uh, Kelly's good enough that he's second in tackles to, to Romanowski. Steve Diossi, another kid who had a fine career at BC, who's playing his home right now, is right here at Giant Stadium. He was out this morning working out. Had a big game Monday night in the Monday night uh, football game where the Giants beat the Redskins. The referee has called a, a timeout here. It's an official's timeout on the field. There we go. Some kind of clock malfunction, but I guess it's operating now. Third down for Rutgers. 
third and six. DC has been putting pressure on Ernie, particularly on the corners, coming with the outside linebackers, not giving him a chance to sprint on the corner. And four receivers in the game. Ernie rolling. He'll keep it. And he'll get the first down yardage up close to the 50-yard line. So once again, Ernie, we've seen it so many times, Bob, when he had to come up with the yardage, he's kept it himself and made it. He's been able to do that because they come with the pressure. Watch as, as we watch this. And the cornerbacks, for BC. Watch this. Here's the pressure coming from the perimeter. He ducks up inside that rush, but the quarterback has turned his back and he's running with the offensive receiver. Therefore, he doesn't have a chance to see what's happening and react to the ball football, and Ernie got another first down. That one good for 11. He's got 39 on the ground today, and he may keep it again. Throws it off and has McQueen there, who's in the BC 40-yard line, kind of a shot put move by Ernie, who at the last instant changed his mind and got the ball off. At that time, he was improvising and coming back from the backside. Ivan Caesar was chasing him down. Watch this here. You'll see Caesar coming into the picture on the left side, but just before that happens, he gets the ball off, and it's tipped beside oh. and makes the catch. So I believe a lot was, of things are working for him. Yeah, it was Kevin Pearson out there. It was a big kid, 6'3", 230. Got his hand on that, just tipped it. But McQueen, lucky enough to be there, and Kelly came over to knock him down. 30 again. This time, Gorantano, does he have it? No. Yes. No. No, He's no. Bobbling it. He did not have possession of the football, and the reason being, Quarantano was in wide open. Zone coverage, he wanted to run with it before he caught it. Watch this. He puts the ball on the corner to number 18, Quarantano. Watch him. He's going to turn right now, but he doesn't have possession. And by the time he does, he's out of bounds. I'll tell you what. The foot, uh, another foot uh, width on the field has been his. Great grab, nonetheless. But it makes it second and ten. Gotta be impressed with Gorantano. He's made some acrobatic moves out there today, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Vince Hall. Kind of backpedals into the line. Stopped after a gain of two. Running the counters, the delay stuff back inside. Effective early on, not so much of late. BC starting to react to it. And of course, when you got a linebacker like Kelly who stays at home, tough to run that stuff. Third and eight, and another big play. So many third down situations with the clock ticking down to ten and a half minutes now. Who knows when you're going to get the ball again at the 36-yard line. Three receivers, top of your screen. Ernie goes up to McQueen. Nice spin move, and Kelly is there at about the 29-yard line. And I don't know. It's about a yard short, Bob. You called it. It's short. This is going to put the uh, decision in the minds of... Uh, on that sideline, but they're not even hesitating. They're going to go for it. There's a big play. Good sprint out action here. Good block in the corner. Gets the hands down of Ivan Caesar. Gives him a chance to get the ball outside to McQueen. He's short by about a yard. And McQueen, who's the eighth hitting receiver in Rutgers history, really helped himself with that spin move after he made the catch. So here we go. The backfield. Hand. Hall. Giles. Ernie, your quarterback. They give to Hall, who leaps up. Rutgers. Again, they bring number 60. Rutgers brings number 60, an offensive tackle. Mitchell in at the tight end position on the left side. Get in a power eye set, get the ball deep to number 36 Hall, and they just follow him through. Good blocking up front. They wanted that first down. A lot of people earned it. No question about it. So Rutgers comes through on the fourth and one. Vince Hall doing the Herschel Walker catapult. <laughs> 26-yard line of Boston College. Scott Ernie sprinting out, firing. McQueen tried to turn before he had the ball in. Also because Eddie Duran was coming in on him. Well, you bet. You bet. He's, he's, he's been hit from both sides by Duran to the left. This time Duran to the right. Lobby the strong safety. He knew he was close. And that's what happened on that play. Duran's such a good all-around player. Last year, he tied for the team lead in interceptions. He was second in tackles, third in quarterback sacks. Just an outstanding athlete from North Bergen, New Jersey. Not far from where we are right now. Second and 10. 9.20 to go. Giles. Left side. Has 
some room, breaks across the 20, to about the 17-yard line. Brought down there by Ed Duran, who trips him up. A child busts across, and Rutgers is moving the ball. They sure are. Good job on the left side. Milano, the left tackle, Erda, the left guard. This is a split backfield. They run it back into the sideline, and Giles knows enough to cut it up and look for the sticks. Gets very close. Big play that time. Third down in short yardage. They're in the four-down zone. They can go for it on fourth down. 18-yard line again at Power Eye. Third and two officially. Potty, he's got it. Inside the Boston College 15. At this point, you're thinking, don't give up the ball if you're Rutgers. And hey, now, on to and just what happened early on, the Boston College defense has been on the field a lot in the second half because their offense really hasn't generated anything. And Rutgers is moving the ball. They come out with a straight T, a power I. That time they're in the wishbone, gave the ball to body. Don't forget to stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game. We'll be selecting a Schick most valuable player from each team. Remains to be seen who that award's going to. 12th play of the drive. First and 10, Rutgers. his way against Matt Kelly and you can tell the Rutgers crowd is fired up the players are pumped up they can see the end zone right now interesting we haven't seen much of body since the first quarter we wondered where he was Giles came in ran the ball effectively but now when the going gets tough and they want to get in that end zone Mike body's back in the ball game and he looks like he's ready for it second and four From the nine, body again, tries to sneak around the far side, unable to do so, Ivan Caesar is there, and Dick Anderson is not happy, body should have stayed inside on that play, he should have cut it back inside, second and short yardage now, he's forced himself, he tries to break it outside, watch the play here, single back, two receivers, body takes the ball, cut it back inside, don't extend it, and Caesar makes a big play, mistake by the part, on the part of uh, Mike Body there, wrong, poor judgment. You sound like a coach, Bob. Well, that's, that's what I know he's saying right down there. Stay in No, you're right. We're in close. we got to get a first down. We can make a touchdown. There he is. Says, Use your head. Got a player down on the field. That's why there's a momentary delay. Can't quite read the number. number 64 Tim Christ I believe Tim Christ is the offensive right guard who stepped in when Steve Tardy was hurt preseason Christ uh, stepped in he's a junior from Morrisville Pennsylvania got a chance to play and has started the last three games for him what does this do when there's a stoppage like this to to the emotion the momentum that you have built up can it hurt it oh of course it can bring it up for you but the big thing here is they've got to settle themselves this is a critical one third down and four inside the 10 yard line because there's a decision to be made here if you don't get the first down what do you do what is your guess will ernie sprint and throw absolutely i think he's going to come off on some kind of a sprint action and look for either a back out of the backfield or one of his wide receivers curling back in melton to the nearest decision he will not go for the first down yardage at least that's what it appears doug giesler is on to attempt the field goal and uh when Giesler ran out a few moments ago, he was met with some jeers here. And I wonder about the strategy here. 6.38 to go, Bob. You're down four points. The field goal brings you within one. Uh, you go along with this? I think in this situation I do because I think he's got a, he's got enough time on the clock. Giesler's got to make it, of course. He's got enough time on the clock to get down, get the ball, and maybe get a shot at winning the game. Now, what about the rain? That's another factor here in terms of the field goal. Makes it a little bit more of a factor. The angle here is what you got to question. He's well off to the right side. At a 28-yarder earlier, this will be a 24-yard kick. Looks good, and it is. So, Doug Giesler comes on and connects from 24 yards out. You hear maybe some of the boos in the background. But 
Rutgers within a point here with 6.36 to go. And right now, Dick Anderson has to depend on his defense to get him the ball back. And Jack Bicknell has to rally his offense and say, hey, we haven't done anything in this second half. We've come up with no points this early in the first period. we got to start making some first downs and take some time off that clock. The challenge here goes both ways. And BC, who has really floundered on offense here since the first period, has to do something. Rutgers' defense unquestionably has had the upper hand in the second half. And you can tell by these stats. I mean, that kind of tells the story, doesn't it? It sure does. Boston College and Rutgers. First met 70 years ago. Boston College trying to snap back from a 29-10 defeat at the hands of Pittsburgh last week. Dick Anderson's club in their third game of the year coming off the two ties. They don't want to be 0-1 and 2 or 0-0 and 3 for that matter. So Geisler will kick it off again. 6.35 to go in the ball game. In his own end zone, that's Graf. And he is smothered at the 17-yard line. Darren Sillage, the first man down. Sellers is all over the field. He's an aggressive player. Rutgers defense has done the job. They looked very shaky in the first half at times. They bent a lot, but they never really broke after that first score. They've done the job. They've got great individual efforts out of their outside linebackers, Lester Jenkins, from their inside linebackers, Yudovich and Spidell, and a good effort out of a sophomore nose tackle, Pete Kofitsis, who's really made a difference inside for him today. So we'll check the offensive uh, formation for Boston College and see which players Jack Bicknell has out there for him. It looks like Cherry is one guy. That's Adam Womack, who is working his way off the field. He's been shaken up. Eddie Toner checks in. Kevin Lyles checks out. Ray Hilbert, Marcus Cherry, the wideouts. Toner is in there along with Tim Frazier, the tailback. Mike Sanders has been the number one ball carrier for BC so far today. 143 yards on the ground. He had more than 100 in the first half alone. This time it's Frazier. Hits the line and keeps on pumping. Excellent effort from Frazier. A gain of about six, maybe seven. Darren Sellis finally brings him down. You thought early on Rutgers had him right there at the line of scrimmage. But he just kept moving. Tim Fraser, injuries, slowed him a lot last year, but he's back this year. And look at the movement, look at the determination. I mean, he just got a half a dozen yards on his own. Great effort. That's what you need to pick up your offense. There's at least three or four missed tackles in there. You saw the arms. You don't bring this guy down with an arm tackle, do you? 71 yards for Fraser. Second and three. Frazier this time is hit hard. He won't be bouncing off that tackle. Scott Miller, James Jenkins in there. Along with Tim Lester. Got an injured Rutgers player. Somebody's down there. Can't quite make it out. tough to pick up. Not able that. to see it just yet. Okay, critical here. He's just short. He fell short by about a yard of a first down. Rutgers trying desperately to get the ball back. BC get a first down here. Gives him a three more downs. Take more time off the clock. Better field position. Pressure now falls to the Rutgers defense, the Rutgers football team. And Dick Anderson knows that. Dick looks like it's, uh, excuse me, Bob's going to say, it looks like Scott Miller is the man down, and that's a shame. He's shown some signs of uh, returning to his form of 1987 when uh, he really was the, the big man on that uh, defensive line and performed so well, had the uh, knee injury after three games of last season. He was the one defensive lineman they had who could really, on his own, put pressure on a quarterback, either the run or the pass. When they lost him last year, they lost that, and it affected their whole defense. But this one looks to be more like a neck injury or a shoulder injury. Well, at least he's getting up. That's a good sign, obviously. So Scott Miller trots off. 
Dick Anderson gives him a, a swat on the on the rear, and we'll see how close they are, Bob. They're less than a yard, really. Actually, now got they've it. got it. <laughs> so that's the second ever to Frazier. He bounced forward. He got hit behind the line of scrimmage, just took it forward and got the first down. So first down for BC with five and a half minutes to go. Dinez checks in at wideout. House, who has not been spectacular today by any means through the air. For BC, it's been a ground attack. That's been the difference so far today. Frazier tried the right side, but the Rutgers defense up to the task. It's one. If that, Jenkins, the first man in there, Tim Lester. Actually gets credit for the tackle, number 98, the uh, senior out of Glassboro, New Jersey. He's had a good day, Timmy Lester. Started 10 of the 11 games last year as a junior. Came back this year, won the position, and he has started all season for Rutgers, and he's going to be a mainstay for my defense, and he's played very well. Ed O'Neill, Ed O'Neill, linebacker's coach, tells me that uh, he's really a smart kid out there. Likes to see him out there because he reads so well. House throwing it, oh my, almost intercepted by Ron Allen at midfield. And you got to wonder about the wisdom of that kind of a pass at this stage of the ballgame. And you got to wonder about the depth of that. He threw that big pattern where he, the receiver on the right side comes down and cuts back in the middle at about 18 yards. The ball is not thrown well. Perhaps it's a little wet. He overthrows him. Big opportunity for the interception. BC very fortunate there not to have a turnover. Now they're looking at third down and eight. Third and eight. Jim Dinez was the intended receiver, so another critical play here in this ballgame. Toner, your single setback. Cherry and Frazier. Wide to the top. Can't pop. Rambling. He's got some room, and he gets through first down, and then sub finally Udovich knocks him out in Rutgers territory. So Camp House, hey, just like Ernie did so many times here in the second half, saw the field situation, plenty of room, and he takes off in a huge play. That's what happens right here. There's the rush inside of trying to twist the two inside guys. The defensive outside rusher, the linebacker from the left side comes too deep, gives Camp House a chance to step inside. That is a crit critical play and probably will come back to haunt Rutgers because it gets them not only a first down, but gets them across midfield. We may look back and call that the most important play of this second half. 22 yards on the play for Camp House as the clock ticks down. 4.17 to go. Frazier coming down the line looking to turn it up. Doesn't get the chance. Pat Udovich is there to make the hit, assisting by, uh, assisted by Tim Lester. Now the Rutgers defense, they got to get a turnover. They got to create some kind of a fumble. Something has to happen for them because the clock is working against them as well as field position. Look at the difference here. So many mistakes last week and today, just one interception. Had a block kick, had a safety, four interceptions, had a, some miserable effort uh, against Pittsburgh. Not much there. Mike Sanders tries the left side. Jenkins and Spidell tries the left side but didn't get out of bounds. Rutgers wanted to get him out of bounds. The clock keeps running, and uh, that's working against him, too. Big play, though, by Rutgers defense. They played it very tough on the line of scrimmage. Here we go again. Another okay. critical third and long. Sure is third and ten. Clock still coming down. We're under 3.10 to go. Rutgers needs the football back. Boston College, they come up with a big play. Looks to be in great shape. They're up 7-3. to three. Draw play. Toner. And he is stopped short of first down yardage at the Rutgers 42. Ron Allen comes up. Also involved in the tackle is Spinell. Big play, big call, single back toner, run a little draw play here, and he really fights for yardage. He's hit two, three times, guys grabbing at him. Finally, Spidell brings him down, forcing DC into a fourth down situation, and Jack Bicknell has elected to go for it. He's not going to give up the football here. 
fourth down and four, and he's going for it with the ball sitting on the 42-yard line of Rutgers. Well, Jack Bicknell, who says, hey, there's no sense in doing things the traditional sensible way at a school like Boston College. He says, hey, let the clock come down, too. Exactly. And that's that's part about, of that. Well, that's did. exactly what he was doing. Okay. Good call. He just milked that clock right down, took the timeout. Now he's going to force the punt. And he's got a lot of confidence in his kicking game, of course, with Lowe back there, who's a boomer. It would have been a fourth and four situation. And at five yards, they mark it off. And simply a, a weapon to use when he has the football of taking some time off the clock. He knows Rutgers will get the ball. He just wants to give them less of an opportunity to do something with it. And what it comes down to, here we come down all the way. It's going to come down to a two-minute drill. That's what this game is the last two minutes of the game. Big, big play. Whoa, missed the snap. Tries to fire it. And he's got a man. And it's Thompson. And he's got first down yardage. And he keeps going inside the 20. David Johnson. David Johnson came up. There is a flag down, a couple of them. And the flag will go against BC because there were men down that's what the call's going to be. I think wow. Tremendous improvisation on the part of Lowe. Incredible execution. That was the kind of play, Bob, that Rutgers was looking for. A turnover, a situation where they could get the ball back on a big play. And Brian Lowe had the presence of mind to pick that football up. You see the penalty. It is against Boston College. A legal man downfield. And Lowe got the pass off. Johnson was there. Watch this. Look at the instincts here. He is and not a bad-looking pass. But here's your problem right there. See those one, two, three guys over the line of scrimmage. Exactly, exactly. That was David Johnson who caught that ball. And again, give Lowe a lot of credit here. And he is being, can't see it right now during the replay, but he is being brought off the field very slowly. Got knocked up a little bit on that sequence. Okay, now here's the situation. You got fourth down, okay? And your kicker was just injured now. As he's, he seems like he's good enough to stay in the ball game. He's okay. Good enough to stay in, apparently. Okay. So Brian Lowe, the senior out of Pittsburgh, with an impressive improvisation. And now he'll get a chance to do it again. This time, I'm sure he's hoping that uh, the <laughs> get the call the timeout kept him in the ball game. Very, very important decision right here. Also gives Lowe a few seconds to uh, kind of regain him his composure a little bit. He's been knocked up pretty good on that sequence. So minute 56 to go. And again, more time off the clock. But Rutgers clearly will get the football back. I would not like to give Lowe a second chance at punting the football. We know what he can do. The big thing, he's got to get the snap. This guy's been under pressure throughout his career, and he's delivered. Here we go. This time, a good snap. And there's a block. Hunt. Rutgers blocks the football inside the 20, and it's picked up there at the 12-yard line. That was John Blanton who blocked it. And number 97 picks it up. But he reads the label. What an effort by the part of number 23 for Rutgers. Blanton. Blanton. John Blanton makes the block. Oh, fortunately, he didn't pick the ball up and run with it. Watch it from the right side. He comes clean, and he just extends himself fully. What a big play. Pick the ball up. Pick it up. <laughs> okay, coach. Minute 48 to go, and this place is buzzing. Listen to your advice from a moment ago. Didn't try to go outside. Peter Gray tackles him there. Look at his sideline. John Blanton. Minute 30 to go. He's the hero at this point, but hey, Ernie has to get this ball in the end zone. Very interesting the way they're, they're handling this thing. They're taking their time with their calls. It's almost like they're playing to get field position here to kick a field goal. Second. is your score. Boston College by a point. Rutgers the football on the 10. Vince Hall hammering to the five-yard line where Rico Lobby grabs Hall under a minute to go. And you're right. Taking their time to this point. The 
clock ticking down again. A field goal can win it for Rutgers. Okay, Brett, into the game comes number 60, the offensive tackle that they, ex they uh, utilize on two tight ends. Mitchell, they're going to come with a two tight end attack here. Try and punch it in a little closer. So they got Mitchell, big number 60, left side. Blanks the tight end on the right side. Wishbone. And the wishbone of Hall. Body gets the call. Tries to drill it up. Gets a couple. David Johnson and Rico Lobby combined. And now Jack Bicknell. I'm surprised BC doesn't call a timeout here. Stop the clock. Big Bay Wood ripped down to 16 seconds, 15 seconds. Ray Anderson apparently is going to go for the field goal here. BC finally, finally. calls timeout with nine seconds left. Nine seconds to go. Very critical here. The ball's going to be put on the left hash mark for Giesler to kick it. Hmm. Nine seconds to go, and this is what it is right here. Okay, they're going to put two more, more seconds, seconds left back, back on the clock, but BC wasted a lot of time in not calling a timeout as they uh, let uh, Rutgers bring that clock right down. Now, Bob, are you surprised that Dick Anderson didn't make more of an effort to milk the clock and work the ball into the end zone as opposed to relying on his kick? I think he milked the clock. I don't think he just... I mean, the you, effort was to get the ball in close and kick the field goal, and that's what, what he did. <laughs> Whether it's right or wrong, it'll depend right now. If he kicked it, everybody will say it was a great strategy. So Giesler comes on. He's already hit two today. One from 28, one from 24. He was the regular kicker back in 1986. He's got an angle here. Lost his take. job to Carmen Slafani. But he's back in the pressure cooker again. A 21-yard attempt with 11 seconds to go. This can win the ball game if it's good. You know, you're going to see the score and people are going to say 9-7, what a dull game, but it hasn't really been that. There Not it is. at all. Giesler in midair, and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are looking good. For nearly 90 years, Buick has strived to offer substantial premium automobiles that by their nature become classics on the great American road. Buick is proud that one of these classics, a 1949 Roadmaster convertible, plays a supporting role in the movie Rain Man. And Buick is also proud of its supporting role in sponsoring the release of Rain Man on video cassette, allowing its uplifting and hopeful story to be absorbed by even more viewers. it ever was. The man of the hour. He's a senior out of Hillsboro, New Jersey, and his name is Doug Giesler, responsible for all nine Rutgers points today. And you know, last year, he was beaten out by Carmen Sclafani, and he sat around and waited for his opportunity, came back this year, and he's been their offense all day. There it is. What a moment for that senior had to be very, very patient as he uh, had to sit on the sidelines and wait for Jack Bicknell, a bitter pill to swallow, coming off a loss last week to Pittsburgh. Unless a miracle occurs, are going to be 0-2. Offensively, BC just never got it going today. They moved the football on the ground, had their moments, but they just couldn't sustain anything. Their passing game really wasn't very effective when they started to throw. It's been a long afternoon for them. You got Graf and Frazier back to receive. Giesler again. We'll kick it off. And it's a line drive squib taken at about the 18. And who is that out there? Number 46 for BC. 
field of that football. That was Poa Peck, a linebacker. And immediately puts the knee down to try to get seven, uh, keep as many seconds as possible on the board. They've got seven seconds to go now, and I'm sure they'll try some kind of a Hail Mary type bomb. Key here is that uh, Rutgers does not give them a chance, does not commit a penalty or an interference call and give them another play. Seven seconds to go. Camphouse again, your quarterback. Hilbert, Cherry, Giles all going out. The pass for Cherry at the 40 goes right down with a second to go, and they're going to have one more play. Darren Sellers there immediately. So they've got the ball up to the 40-yard line. The chains move. A first down. There will be one final play. Here we go. Camphouse. Rush. Going long to the near side, and Cherry, who slips and falls as the ball comes to him, but it's too late. And that man, Dick Anderson, has just won his first football game of the 1989 season. And walking over to greet him at midfield, you'll see him momentarily, Jack McNell, whose Boston College Eagles fall to 0 and 2. And I think you had it right, Bob, when you said tomorrow in the papers when they see this score, 9 to 7. People like Scarlet Knights pull it out here. Doug Geisler's field goal, the difference, 9 7 the final. Our MVPs for the day. For Boston College, Mike Sanders, who rushes for 143 yards. And naturally for Rutgers, the senior, Doug Geisler, with his three field goals. The winner coming with seconds remaining on the board. And as part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award scholarship program, Schick will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both Boston College and Rutgers University. The new Schick Slim Twin Razor System. It reaches every place on every face. Don't forget next Saturday, Wake Forest and Army from Mikey Stadium. Should be a good one. You see Doug Geisler up in the air. They're celebrating here at Giant Stadium as Rutgers has won it. The final 9-7. to seven. Want to thank our stats man, Chuck Gardner, our spotter, Bill Freel. For Bob Cassiola, I'm Corey McFerrin. Hope you've enjoyed it. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports. Exclusive coverage of great American independent football.